Allie Borealis here. Welcome to my channel and thank you so much for subscribing. I don't know if y'all caught part one of this jewelry unboxing, but I'll give you a little recap. So one of my Canadian viewers, Sue, took care of her neighbor, Pat or Patricia, in the last couple years of her life. It was just so unbelievably kind and generous and sweet of Sue to do that. So Sue ended up acquiring quite a bit of Pat's jewelry after she passed away. And Sue just really wants to honor Pat. So she decided to send the jewelry my way and we're selling it all off. And 25% of the sales is going to one of Patricia's favorite animal charities. So know that when you're buying something here, you're not only honoring the life of Pat and the incredible act of service of Sue, but you're also supporting animals. I pulled a lot of treasures out on that first video. So let's see what else this box has in store for us. Travel Charm Bracelet, some sterling. Oh yeah. She has the, she has Chrysler Park, Ontario. So both Sue and Patricia are from Ontario. The bracelet itself doesn't have any markings and it is magnetic, but let's look at each one of these little charms. It has a safety clasp. We have this boot rhinestone charm that looks very costume. And then we have this little magnetic uh, anchor. This must be the little sterling charm she's talking about. Snowbird, snowbur, snowbow, snowbow. That's hard to say. I don't know who snowbow is, but he looks like he's a very famous, uh, maybe mushing dog sled dog. So I researched Snowbow and there's apparently a Santa's village in this particular town in Ontario and Santa's dog was called Snowbow. I don't think he's still alive, but boy was he handsome. Look at him. Statue of Liberty. That's magnetic. Typewriter. That's magnetic. Chrysler Park is stamped sterling. Oh, she liked the rodeo. I can't, that might be slightly, slightly magnetic. That's like a little gemstone. Okay, so a couple of sterling pieces on that cute little charm bracelet. So this vintage charm bracelet has eight charms and two of them are sterling. And I'm going to do $20 on this bracelet. Snowbow alone is worth $20. Clip-ons brooch pin set. Ooh, how fancy. I don't see any marks on it. I'm going to do a little bit more research. There's a little amount of verdigris back here. And that pendant part might have been added, but uh, or maybe that was added or maybe nothing was added. So interestingly enough, I found this listing. Of course, it has clear stones and mine has, I think, a prettier stone. And it's slightly different, but you can tell it was by the same manufacturer. And if you look at the back of theirs, it's stamped Kramer. Their earrings are slightly different, but it seems as though their backs are unmarked as well. And a lot of times, especially what I've heard with Kramer, is they may only mark one piece in their Peru set. So I would say that my set is probably Kramer and I think someone added this pin on the back to make it into a brooch because it's a pendant. I'm gonna sell this 1950s unsigned set for $75. Woo. Wow. Brownish brooches can't see mark. I will see the mark with my magnification. It does have one loose stone I'm noticing, but 
that shouldn't be an issue. I can probably just pop that one back in there. Gosh, it's luscious. I don't see any mark on this one. Just kind of looking at the characteristics on it. But gosh, it has lovely caramel colors. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll fool with that one and get that back in there. It has a large center AB stone and all these lovely caramel nevettes. I was able to get the nevette back in there, but I don't know if it's going to stay in there. So given that and that it's unsigned, I'm going to do $18 on this beautiful brooch. And then, wow, look at this one. It's a heavier brooch and it has caramel and clear rhinestones. There's the back of it. You know, some people might say, oh, is it Juliana? This one's not Juliana. It, you know, it has so many rhinestones, so you think it might be. Juliana didn't use um, a separate piece to put as a pin. It, Juliana's was a fixed as part of the brooch. So you wouldn't have this bar piece in there. But it's a real stunner. And there's other characteristics that make it not Juliana, but that was the first thing that stood out to me. And here's an example piece that I pulled from the verified site. Is it julianajewelry.com? You can see the pin is attached to the brooch on either side and not a separate piece that's been put on. I did notice there are three prongs that have verdigris on them, so I just wanted to point that out. I ended up pulling out two pair of earrings uh, in this box that I think they both seem to go. The stones match and I'm not really clear which ones are original. So I'm just going to sell both of them with the brooch because I hate to break up sets. So I'm going to do this gorgeous brooch with both pair of earrings for $38. <laughs> she did show me this one. This is a boucher. Let me just look at it. Let me verify. Oh yeah. This is a boucher and it has one tiny little missing little turquoise. Oh, it has two missing turquoise. I'm going to investigate this one a little bit more before I give you guys a price on it. Sometimes even bouchers with missing stones sell very, very well. This is what the back looks like. It is signed boucher and numbered 0517. It is missing three tiny faux turquoise stones. And given the resale value on even boucher pieces that need to be repaired, I'm just going to sell this by itself. And I'm going to do $18 on it. What do we have here? Gold colored bracelet with purple stone slash glass. Look at that. I almost want to pair it with that necklace. In part one of the estate jewelry unboxing, I found this lavalier that has amethyst colored glass as well. This one was a 10 karat gold antique. So if you want to watch that video, it does have me wonder if Pat's grandmother wore these together. The lavalier is Art Nouveau style and the bracelet is Victorian style. This is non-magnetic. That's non-magnetic. Let's see what this stone, if this stone is glass. Yes, it is glass. It's lovely. Even the side of the bracelet here is decorated. Oh yeah, I can definitely see now that it's costume. Let's see if there's any marks in it. This is an exquisite piece of jewelry. Look how that's attached right there so that there's a movement in the bracelet. I didn't see any markings on this bracelet, but other bracelets I'm finding with this same band say that they're gold filled. And these are known as sweetheart bracelets and they're from the Victorian era, which means they're over a hundred years old. So it makes it an antique bracelet. There is a little bit of wear on this bracelet, but given that it's super ornate and antique, I'm gonna do $48 on this bracelet. That's why estate jewelry is just the best. You just, it's full of surprises and you don't really ever know what you're gonna get. This looks similar to that other one that I, I when I first opened the box that turned out to be sterling and, um, Quartz. 
quartz. No, this is magnetic. But these are definitely costume. These just test as glass. But it's a cute set. This has 16 miscellaneous pieces. Miscellaneous goodness. Let's see what we have in here. This, I just love doing that because I sort estates for CT bids. I'm for one of the franchises, I'm their um, estate jewelry person. And this is really what I get when I go in to sort someone's estate. I get a lot of just pieces that are lumped together that I've got to like distinguish and determine what they are. And um, it's just really fun. I find it to be really fun. This is a scarf clip. This looks like it's gold. Like it's maybe a class ring, an old class ring. Let's see, sometimes these have the year on them, but let's take a peek. That stamped tin carat. Let's see if that's a diamond. Oh, maybe the P is for Patricia. Yes, that is a diamond on that ring. Let's do it that way. That's like a 5.25. A I think Patricia's a 5.25 and a 5.5. .5 on rings is what we're finding. So some people are calling these signet rings and some people are calling these class rings. And most of the listings say that the black part is onyx. I'm not clear on this ring if the black part is onyx or not, but we do know we have a diamond and 10 karat gold. And I'm gonna sell this ring for $125. Then sometimes these can be gold too. I don't think this one is, but Hmm. It says C-O-F and it's got a little moose. I'm, you know, I'm not from Canada and I don't live in Canada. So this looks very Canadian to me. Uh, so I'm not clear exactly what that is. That looks like it might be sterling. Oh yeah, yeah. This is a high school. It is stamped sterling. I don't see a year, unfortunately. But we'll see what, what size ring this is. That's like a six and a half, 6.25. So the ring is sterling with an enamel front and I'm gonna do $18 on this ring. There's a costume pen. Does that have a mark? No, no mark on it. Oh, this is a little poodle. How cute are you? I think that's a poodle. It's a poodle with two little amber colored rhinestone eyes. He's very cute. Here's a, uh, this is like, these are like chipped, kind of chipped gemstones that are layered in here. I don't know if this was added or if it came like that, but it's definitely costume and no um, maker's mark on it. Wow, that's beautiful. Look how gorgeous. I think the stone needs to be cleaned a little bit and it would really pop. Let's see. It is signed 10 karat. Let's see what that stone test says. This is a gorgeous ring. It is a little bent, but you can easily reshape that. But I wanna see about this stone. Oh, the stone's glass. Um, but regardless, it's, uh, very pretty. Oh, I can see it now. It's chipped. So, um, it's a beautiful setting though. And it's 10 carat. I'll give you a size on it. That's a five and a half. I like that. I like how basic and, but it's basic. Yes. Yet it's elegant and 10 karat. The vintage setting is so beautiful and unique and I wish that was a real gemstone in there. Um, the glass does have a little bit of cracks around the edge and some scratching on the surface. So I'm gonna do $78 on this 10 karat ring, mostly just for the band. This is another uh, costume piece, let's see. 
It says cross and crown. Oh, here's a caduceus. Let me check this one out. Oh yeah, hmm. Sterling. I was a Navy corpsman and this is the insignia we would wear on our sleeve was the caduceus because uh, we're medical, the corpsman, corpsman's medical. So this, <laughs> so this is always like validation to me that I'm on the right track when I, when I see things that are kind of like personal to me. Like, oh, who would have a caduceus of all the jewelry I sort? I've, I think I've one time in the past since 2016 come across a, a caduceus. So I like that this is in there. It's sterling. Uh, that looks like, oh, that's a barrette. I wonder if there was a stone in there. Maybe not. Maybe that was just like your basic little barrette. Oh, that looks gold as well. Wow. Sue sent me a lot of gold. Oh yeah, it's 10 carat as well. Let me measure that really quickly. That's a 3.25. It's a tiny little ring. I don't even think that would fit on my pink. Oh, maybe so. Look at that little pinky ring. <laughs> it does look like it has a monogram maybe. Oh yeah, I think it's a PD maybe. I, I know the P, but I don't know what her last name was. But So that's a little 10 carat ring. So for this little monogram 10 carat pinky ring, I'm gonna do $55. Here's an unsigned brooch. That's costume, yes. Hmm. I wonder if those are diamonds. Let's take a peek. So, you know, you can come across things like this and it could at first glance be costume, but that's stamped 14 karat. Let's see what those stones test as. She liked her fine jewelry. Patricia liked her fine jewelry. From what I've heard, she loved her parents and she loved animals. So I thought these may be diamonds, but I tested it twice and it kept consistently testing in the sapphire range. So these are actually white sapphires. I'm going to do $55 on this pendant. Okay, let's see what this is. <laughs> I get, that cannot be a diamond. That's a, that would be huge. I don't see any marks on it. It is non-magnetic. Let's just see. Let's see if this is a diamond. No. Yeah, that's glass. Yeah, that looks costume to me. The gold looks costume. But it's a very large pendant. I'm just going to check it. I, I think it's, I think this is glass. Oh, look at that. Well, would you look at that? When you think you know, you just don't know sometimes. That's reading like spinel range, which has me wonder what it's set in. Oh, is it stamped? Okay, I'm gonna test that really quickly. Since it is a gemstone, just use my 18 karat here. See if it's sterling. Oh yeah, that does test as sterling. I'm gonna do $10 for this one. Seven pieces of Koro signed. It's a lovely Koro bag. Wow. Let's start one by one. Oh yeah, I do see the Koro right there. Oh yeah, that's a Pegasus Koro. The great thing about many of the vintage costume brands that we love is that they change their maker's marks through the years. So what that does for us is it allows us to somewhat date the piece. So this particular Pegasus Coro mark was used from what I can tell around 1945. It's in pre really pretty good condition for being as old as it is. Oh, look at this one. It has shells on it and the safety chain. You know what? It looks similar to this one, but it's it has the shells on it. And it's also signed with the Pegasus Coro. 
and it's in great condition as well for being from 1945. Often these bracelets with safety chains, the safety chain will be damaged or broken on these older pieces. So we have two very similar Pegasus Coro bracelets from 1945, and I'm gonna do $10 a piece on these bracelets. Darling little Coro. These are kind of 1950s style. They have, no, if these have just a maybe a tiny bit of verdigris, but nothing terrible. Yeah, they have a, a just a tiny bit of verdigris on the filigree. Verdigris on the filigree. I found this necklace in the box as well, and I really feel like they go together. The beads are the same and the end caps of the beads are the same. And I think it's possible that the hook on the clasp may have been replaced and this could potentially be a Coro as well. So I'm just gonna sell them together. So I'm gonna do $6 on the two of these together. These are little clips. So they would go like that. Like that. Oh, I see. This is the necklace that goes with it. So that's a set. You have that one, and then you have these that go with it. They're almost like little bugles, is what they remind me of. On this gold tone Coro Demi Peru set, I'm going to do $12. We have this one with a very large rhinestone. Coro signed. And for this Coro necklace and pendant with a very large rhinestone, I'm going to do $18. And then here's another bracelet, but this one's silver. Let's see what that mark looks like. This one doesn't have the Pegasus, Pegasus it's just the Coro. I wonder, they must have put these gold ones out first and then followed it with the silver because they're even a different size different width. This one does have the safety chain intact and I'm going to do $8 on it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's see what's in this little baggie. Some more brooches. Oh, this is another scarf clip. Western Germany. These were commonly Western Germany. Here's a very large brooch that's acrylic. That it feels like a natural stone. The turn part of the clasp is a little loose, so it keeps coming unclasped. I think it might be this stone, rhodochrosite, but I'm not positive. For this natural stone brooch, I'm gonna do $15. This might be an artisan piece, just by the way this clasp is. It's non-magnetic. I'm curious if that's sterling. I'm going to test that. No markings on this one. I think that center stone is plastic. I have some filigree work on that one. Oh, look at these birds. Aww. Birds of a feather flock together is what comes to my mind. Just adorable. Oh yeah, that's magnetic. It has uh, two little birdies with enamel on it. Oh, that's very sweet. Two rings, vintage sterling, one ring stone missing. Let's see. I love it when they come in these old boxes. Let's check this one out. Yes, that does say sterling. I think these are probably glass, but let's see. Yeah, that's not, that's really not moving. It does have one stone missing. So the stamp on the inside says Sterling and it says ESPO, which stands for Joseph Esposito. QVC used to carry his jewelry line. This ring is a size six and given that it has a missing stone, I'm gonna do $6 on this ring. Let's see what this is. It seems pretty tarnished, but I don't know if that's because it's really old or if it's more modern, but let's see. 
So, oh, so it says 925, which means the 925 mark came into use starting in 1973. So this is probably not as old as I thought it might have been, but let's see what these stones test is. They're just glass, but it is sterling. And I do like this little box. It's almost, this is almost like Tiffany color, but I'm not clear if that's actually a Tiffany box. But I will throw the box in if you purchase this ring. The CZ stones are really pretty, and I think it would look even nicer if the sterling was cleaned. It measures a size 5.25, and I'm going to do this ring for $15. There are so many goodies in here. I thought, did we just have a similar one like this one, maybe? Oh yeah, that's magnetic. I found the earrings to these later on in the video, so I'm just going to sell them now as a set for $6. Ooh, look at these pretty ones. I love all these dreamy stones that they used back then. Filigree. I don't think it has any kind of a brand on it. Kind of 1950s-ish. Hmm. This is a rhinestone bracelet with AB stones. Vintage. The wrong stones are all prong set. It doesn't look like it's missing any. I don't think it has any marks on it. Oh, look at those rivets in the back. This type of construction was called swedge and rivet, and it was popular in the 1950s. You can easily see the rivets on this bracelet. The swedge is a metal forming technique in which the metal of one part is formed to fit around another part through pressing, hammering, or through a die. It actually prevents needing to solder anything. They definitely don't make rhinestone tennis bracelets like that anymore. I'm going to do $14 on this beautiful bracelet. Oh, I was like, look at that ring, but it's hooked to something. Let's try and see what it is. I'm, oh, maybe it hangs this way. Like you put it there, right? And then you have this huge ring that hangs down. Like a, it's a necklace with that big old stone in it. Maybe it's for the bride to wear at her bachelorette party. It's an interesting piece. We have these two necklaces. I think they're two different lengths, but they're the same. They look like they're the same maker. So you could even kind of wear them together. One is like a, more of a choker than the other. Yeah, that's magnetic. And then we have the this older style, um, these sweater clips. No brand on that. These are pretty heavy, actually. Oh, this is real delicate. I wonder if that's sterling. Non-magnetic. Oh, that part's magnetic, but let me take a peek. No, looking at the back of it, it looks costume. It doesn't look sterling to me but it's really delicate. And you can tell by the style of clasp that it's modern. And then we have this um, rhinestone, vintage rhinestone necklace. You can see it's got this little clasp. There we go. And then we have this grouping of uh, bracelets. I think that one's popped. It's a cute little tassel bracelet with five bangles, and given that one of the bracelets needs to be soldered, I priced it accordingly. This is just one of those like gold dipped leaves, it seems like. Just a little leaf pendant. This is costume. I don't think there's any marks on it. It's a double strand necklace. We have this little blue necklace with an older style clasp. This says possible 
Hattie Carnegie Vintage Brooch. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. oh, look at that little guy. This is glass and these are rhinestones. I'll have to uh, look into this one a little bit more. He's adorable though. Look at the colors on that. So I did look into this a little bit more and what I found was even more interesting than Hattie Carnegie. It's this was supposedly designed by Kenneth Lane for Hattie Carnegie. It was Kenneth Lane's very early days and I was reading a New York Times article so I, I tend to believe they kind of vet what they're printing. And when Kenneth Lane first started out designing jewelry, Hattie Carnegie bought him out and then made him design director. And that arrangement lasted less than a year and he left and then really started his own company. Now, I haven't been able to verify this part, but during that period of time, he supposedly designed this collection called Primitives on Parade uh, while working under Hattie Carnegie. These are some of the Primitives on Parade that I was able to find from eBay listings. And you can see they were made in lots of different colors and mix and match. And some of them were made of glass, like the one I have, and some of them were made of lucite. So on this Kenneth J. Lane for Hattie Carnegie Aardvark, I'm gonna do $65. And on that note, we're gonna take a little break for animals. I'm gonna show you my cat who often crashes my light box, but that's okay, because I love him so much. I wanted to share with you too, this is the Animal Rescue where we're donating 25% of the proceeds. They're located in Ontario, Canada. Sign Coro Grape Brooch. Oh yeah. These beads are called Moon Glow. Let me check out the rhinestones. Yeah, it has a very faint Coro stamp, but the Coro stamp is still there. This is what I was talking about when they like stamp stuff so much that the kind of the plate that they're using to stamp starts to wear out. So some of the pieces you don't get a very good stamp on, but this one is, is um, visible enough that you can still see it. I looked at this one a little closer and there is one small missing rhinestone and you can kind of see some aged glue around the bottom of the beads, but all in all, it's gorgeous. So keeping those things in mind, I'm gonna do $18 on this beautiful vintage Coro brooch. This says Canada Sterling Charm Bracelet, East Coast. Canada Sterling Charm Bracelet. The bracelet itself is non-magnetic. Oh, that's got a little mag, sometimes the clasps have a little magnetism even though it, the rest of it is sterling. But let me check it out. So the bracelet itself is stamped sterling and most all these little charms on it which are all kind of Canada related, are stamped sterling, except this little lobster isn't, but I think that lobster is magnetic. Let's see, yeah, that's definitely not sterling, but all of these little ones have sterling on the back. And then this one, I couldn't find the sterling mark, but it looks sterling, let's see, and it's non-magnetic. These are the 12 charms we have, pretty much all Canadian, and 10 of the 12 charms are sterling and the bracelet is sterling. So I'm gonna do $55 on this bracelet. Let's see what's in here. Oh, it's a stopwatch, like a pocket watch. Wow, it's very pretty. It looks like more of a pocket watch than a stopwatch, but let's see if we can wind it a little bit. I don't know. Oh yeah, there it is. You see the, the bottom is moving since I've wound it. It's probably one of those ones that you have to keep up with the winding on it. So it looks like it's in working condition. It has a really pretty engraving on the back with a little bird. And I'm going to see maybe if I could get the back off, it will give me a lot more information. So some pocket watches, you have to wedge something to pop the back off because that's really where a lot of the information is. But this one is nice because it just screws off. I hardly ever see these that just screw off like this. Just like that. 
and there's information on this lid and there's information here too. And sometimes the maker of the case is different than the maker of the parts. Which can also be different from the company who sells the watch. So the underside of the back of the case has this stamp. So the case itself was made by Banner. It also has this hand inscribed number, which from what I've read, the watchmakers that would repair the watches would use this as a reference method so that they could keep track of the watches that they repaired and know which watch they've done which repairs on. So it was kind of an internal reference number. You can see the internal serial number here on the inner workings and I don't see a company name back here. Sometimes they would have one that would show you who made the inner workings. And then the company who sold the watch would have their name on the front here. So from my research, this is from T. Eaton of Canada. For this gold filled Eaton pocket watch that appears to be in working condition, I'm going to do $95. Ooh, this one looks pretty. Vintage petty point, needle point, floral clip on and brooch. Wow. How unique is that brooch? That is really amazing. This is the most unique uh, needlepoint, pettipoint jewelry I've ever seen. Normally they're like the other ones I showed you that look more like in a little cameo. And then let's see what these matching earrings look like. Wow, somebody really took their time with this. And I want to be careful because there's the other ones I showed you had like a plastic protector over it. These don't. So I don't want to really touch this with my um, hands. I don't want to get any oils on these off my hands because it'll start to, start to show over time. But look how amazing that is. So I actually had this upside down. If you turn it around, you can see it's like a little wine pitcher and it even stands up on its own. The earrings are clipped back. And for this set, because it's so unique, I'm going to do $20 for everything. This one says necklace and screw on earrings unknown, very plain. Wow, they have some interesting an interesting um, kind of iridescent design to them. I don't think I don't think these are sterling, but yeah, that's magnetic. So these are unsigned, but made by a company called Jewelarama, and they made uh, a lot of different types of jewelry. I thought these brooches were really interesting, and they're from the 1960s. And I'm just going to do five dollars for this set. This says signed pearl like necklace, two strands. Oh yeah, this is very old. Oh, look at that clasp. It's got a little rhinestone affixed on the tip of it. You don't see that very often. It does have a little bit of verdigris in there. Let's see if that's a signature on that. It does have something that almost looks like MC. It's hard to make out. I've never seen that uh, on a clasp like that before. But look how unique and beautiful that clasp is. Now this part has a little verdigris, but these are uh, knotted. So these don't have, you know, these aren't metal. It's real delicate. It's almost like a choker style. Here's another pearl necklace, old and dirty. Pearl-like necklace marked sterling. This has a sterling clasp on it, I'm assuming. That again is a very vintage style clasp. It just kind of hooks, maybe. Let's see, it's supposed to hook and then feed. Oh, there we go. It's a, it's, I, you know, this clasp is pretty common, but not in this particular design with this big hook like that. And then 
When you look at these vintage clasps on pearls and things like that, a lot of times the mark will be right here on the side and sometimes they're easily missed. Sometimes it'll even be like a 14 karat mark if they're gold, but this one is clearly sterling. What is this? A rhinestone bracelet, stretchy, made in Japan. Oh yeah, look at all those rhinestones. It's still in great condition. Sometimes this particular style of stretch will have a lot of wear on it, but this one is in good condition. And I'm sure it's marked somewhere that it's made in Japan. Let me see what that says. Yeah, there's a little, um, one of the, uh, there it goes right there. Usually you, if there's gonna be a mark, it'll be right in here. But it's, it's in really clean condition and very functional for a vintage uh, piece. This one says clover pin signed. Let me see what the signature might be on this. Oh yeah, it, it is signed in the middle. Is that Regency? Let's see. Mm. I need to look at this a little bit more because I can't quite make that out. But I do want to see, I mean, these are probably rhinestones, but I'm just going to check real quick especially since I'm not familiar with the brand. Yeah, that's glass. Those are just big rhinestones. So I ended up finding the earrings to this in this box and all of the pieces are stamped Triad. And from what I've researched on this, Triad was a distinguished Canadian jewelry manufacturer in the 1940s era. Their pieces were of exceptional quality and in the marketplace before the famed Sherman Jewels, which was also a Canadian company. There is a very small amount of verdigris around the hinge part of the back clip of the earrings. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to do this whole set for $10. Ooh, this one's pretty. Signed brooch. I wonder if these are gemstones. They're like a smoky color. Let me see if I can find a signature on it. I do, there's a signature right there. Let me um, unclasp it and see if I can read it. I think it says Amcel, which I've never heard of. I wanna test and see if these are um, gemstones. They're probably just rhinestones. It's a real pretty brooch. Yeah, those are just glass. It's interesting, it's beeping, because it usually only does that when it touches metal. But I'm just touching the, the rhinestones. Hmm, I've never had a rhinestone beep like that before. It does seem like they put some sort of an iridescent coating over this. I wonder if it has a bit of metal in it. So what I'm finding on this company, there's not a lot of information, but they were also out of Canada and they were producing jewelry in the 1960s. On this beautiful sign, Canadian brooch, I'm gonna do $12. Ooh, this is 16 pair of earrings. These all look very vintage. Let's see what we have. These are beautiful clips. The AB coating on the crystals means they're 1956 or later. You can tell by the backs how vintage they look there. These do have a very small amount of verdigris on them as well. I don't see any marks on these. So I found the necklace that matches these earrings as well. They're very Haskell-esque, but they're, I, they're not Miriam Haskell. So I'm selling these together as a set. Oh yeah, these are costume as well. Let me check these though. I, these feel costume, but I just wanna, oh, you know what? That one's missing a stone. I think that is, let me see. Let me see, let me see. Okay. No, they're not missing stones. It's over time sometimes. This These little stones right here will get yellowish which means you like to, to make them look better, you gotta pop the stone out and clean them and then re, you know, attach them and put them back in to make the yellowish color um, 
it's like the glue that's worn in there. It gets a little yellowish. Ooh, look at these. These are fun too. No markings. I really like this the style um, of earrings during this period. And I also found the necklace that goes with these earrings to make it a set. Oh, these are vintage rhinestone. Ooh, these are Aurora Borealis. Look how shiny they are. Those are super gorgeous and real delicate too. And look, these rhinestones at the bottom have open backs. They almost look like they could be modern, but they're, um, the clips are look older, like they're vintage. I like these. Very dressy. And these are some little gold flowers. I don't see any marks on these either. We have another pair of rhinestones. Wow, she really liked this color. See what these look like. These seem to have like a, an AB stone at the top. That's what the backs look like. Ooh, here are some pretty blue ones. These are clean, clean vintage. Gosh, those are gorgeous. Even for like the holiday, these, those, these feel very holiday to me. Let's see if these have any markings. These look like Italian mosaics. I don't see any. But they're actually painted enamel earrings. These are kind of milk glass with like an AB finish. They're actually lucite made to look like milk glass. And I found the necklace on this one as well. So I'm going to sell them together as a set. We have these little feather ones. And we have these um, kind of fun fetty lucite ones with gold in there. Here are some dangles. These almost look like hematite, maybe. I wonder if that's gonna register or if that's just a glass. No, that's just glass. They just look like hematite. One side's faceted, the other's not. Oh, I think it's that way. Yeah, I think that one's flipped. So the faceted side is the side that faces forward. And then the last one in these in this bag is um, this little pair right here. Little rhinestone screw backs with a dangle, the rhinestone dangle on them. So we're gonna pause there and here's a sneak peek of what's to come in the next video on this box. And there are some spectacular pieces and we have not even gotten to the beautiful blue Sherman pieces yet. Thanks for joining me today in helping Sue honor Pat. And remember 25% of your purchase goes to the Last Chance Horse and Pony Rescue in Ontario, Canada. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.